a nice little crowd here this morning um, or and this afternoon, depending on where you are. It's For Jeff, it's this morning. Uh, first yeah. off, my name's Kevin Raber. Uh, many of you know me, so I don't think I need to go into a big explanation, but I do want to thank you all for taking some time uh, during your busy day to be part of this. Uh, we are recording this, so if you have to leave for any reason, uh, the recording will be up in a couple days on the uh, PXL uh, YouTube site, as well as I'll put an article up on the PXL uh, site with a link to the, the video. Um, and we have the regular uh, Mary Trio or Mary Quadro of, of participants, Jeff Shiwi. Uh, the hey, four Jeff. horsemen. It's the four horsemen. The four horsemen. <laughs> So we've got uh, Jeff over there. He's Jeff happens to be in Hawaii today. He flew out there just so he could like do that. But truly, um, I believe he's got a green screen um, yeah. doing this. Oh wait, I got to get a photograph. Okay, maybe it isn't a green screen. <laughs> he's <walking. laughs> all right. So while Jeff's taking a photograph, uh, we have Holger. Hoy. We have Holger from Germany, uh, and. Uh, we have uh, John Cornicello. John is the founder of this little uh, venture, and he was uh, did this all during the pandemic, two times a week. Can you believe it? I don't know how he did it when it's hard enough just trying to get a speaker and put it all together once every two weeks. But um, John, thanks once again for all your service, and Holger for all your help with the graphics. Jeff, just for being there. And uh, we are going to have a fun day today. Uh, Russell Brown, who many of you know and have been following either on social media or whatnot, is going to uh, give us a little presentation today. My experience with Russell is I saw his presentation a long time ago at a Macworld or Photoshop World um, uh, meeting, thousands of people in the room, and he had like an overhead projector and he did magic. I mean, it was, I've never seen a presentation like it, probably never will. But I'll never forget it. You're yeah, not going to so. see that today. No, no <laughs> probably not. But I don't know how you did that magic, but that was probably was one of the finest presentations I've ever seen a presenter do at a show. And Somebody so, told me I should retire after that presentation. Russ, you've hit the pinnacle. No, nothing else is. You're done. Yeah, yeah. just quit now. <laughs> that <laughs> was can't. freaking magic. But if you don't follow Russell on social media, Facebook and um, uh, Instagram, Instagram and stuff, you you should because. He's always out photographing with an iPhone mostly and strobes and incredible models and costumes and doing some remarkable stuff. Um, it's always fun uh, to, to see uh, a guy get out there and do so much as Russell does. But today, Russell's going to give us a special program. And rather than, you know, babber on here and babble all over the place, I'm just going to turn it over to Russell. And Russell well, is. Well, no, you're here. not. Why am I? Turn you're going to turn it over to me because I'm the co-host and I'm doing an introduction to Russell Preston Brown and a visit to Adobe. Okay. Um, so you can I'm, see how, how many people, you see how, how many people are. here have actually visited Penn West in San Jose at the Adobe towers. I have, um, I am going to share my screen. Russell, bear with me. I, I've approved this. I've approved this. I have. <laughs> okay, so I think you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see yeah. your screen just fine. Oh, good. So I believe this is Russell Preston Brown back in 1964. No, what, <laughs> what year was this? This is 1986. Oh, God. 86, okay. So, but when did you actually officially start at Adobe? April 11th, 1985. Oh, so you're coming up on an anniversary. Yes. Um, this is a portrait of Russell that I was fortunate enough to shoot uh, for an article that was in um, whatever the hell uh, magazine, a digital imaging or something for PP of A, uh, the history of Photoshop at 20 years and now we're past 30. Um, and then this is what Russell sent me. I said, Russell, we need a picture of you now. So apparently he was testing uh, and making uh, DNG profiles uh, or, or not, but using the color checker. So I just wanted to briefly show you a tour, a brief tour of what it would be like to go visit Adobe. So pulling into the parking lot, 
Uh, this is the entrance from the parking lot. Uh, you have to go through security because, you know, top secret, tell no one. Oh, no, top secret, tell everyone. Uh, the lobby is actually quite nice, but always seems to be empty, uh, particularly in this day and age with the pandemic. A couple of years ago, I went to go visit Russell and, and I said, well, is you going to be in the office? And nobody goes in the office. Now everybody works from home. Uh, so anyway, looking at the, I can't remember what floor this is, but this is what it looks like from the, the big A. Futura, Russell, is that, or did you, did you, uh, did you have any involvement in the A logo? Uh, no, I did not. Okay. There, was a, there was a team hired, uh, okay. a group inside of Adobe. Um, but it's kind of cool, and it is emblematic. Uh, so basically, I love the text and the type. Uh, now, the, the, the towers, they just finished the fourth tower, I think. I've not seen that. Um, and the interesting thing is that it's really nice architecture, but there's this weird thing. The Adobe Towers are on the flight path for the San Jose Airport. And it the planes come close enough that I've actually waved uh, mm -hmm. at pilots and they've waved back. And and what I'm not kidding. I mean, it's like really close. Um, Very close. <laughs> Seattle's office is similar. Yes, but it's it's uh seaplanes. Different scale. <laughs> So anyway, enough with the plane. Oh, there it is. Um, but the towers up on 10 West. Photoshop is still on 10 West. Is that right, Russell? Uh, yes, we're still on 10 West. Yeah. Um, this was the office at the time. It, it turns out that Russell was um, uh, uh, squatting in a uh, conference room, and now he's moved to a smaller room. But there's this Russell, Russell Preston Brown name. Uh, in his office, and he attacked me with Godzilla. Godzilla. Arr. Uh This was funny. I get a kick out of Adobe does quite the deal with um, trying to make sure that the employees are well stocked with refreshments and caffeine-based drinks. Uh, and this is funny. I don't know where the fat cat came from, but uh, the janitors clean the refrigerator every Sunday uh, morning. So if you want to take your food home, take it home. Thank you, facilities. Um, this was the CS2 press um, um, poster, all the quotes that people were saying. Uh, and this was on the whiteboard. Uh, actually, I got to go into the Photoshop war room because I signed an NDA. Uh, and I could tell you all kinds of stuff, but then uh, they would shoot me. Uh, oh, did I mention the planes? Uh, the last time I got to see Russell, we got together with Julianne Cost, John Knack, who now has officially moved to Microsoft, Microsoft. and Mark Polliger, uh, who I think is still at Google. Uh, but, you know, it's all, it's Ohana. We call it Ohana in Hawaii. All good. And then, of course, art directing by Russell Brown. He didn't this was the straight shot that the waiter did. And then Russell said, let's do something fun. And then that's what we did. So um, that is it. I am going to stop share. Uh, if I can figure out where the hell, my, there it is. I'm out in the sun and it's hard to see my laptop. Ah, there we go. So uh, now I would like to introduce Russell Preston Brown and John Noel, uh, Thomas Noel's brother, once said to me, uh, he quipped that Russell Brown was Adobe's secret weapon for the success of Photoshop because the other uh, companies tended to have engineers come and give presentations and they were boring and not very exciting. But Russell Preston Brown made Photoshop look fun and easy to do. Uh, even though we know it's really complicated and hard unless you take a class from Russell Preston Brown. And Russell, actually, you even have an Emmy for one of your videos uh, tutorials. So, Russell, without further ado, and I'm <clears throat> not going to do anything, I'm going to mute myself. Um, I just wanted to thank you very much for coming and take it away, Russell. Wow. Wow. 
Jeff, those pictures you you photographed are from um, twenty um, oh five. They're yes. really really old. They've they've updated the buildings and um, everything's quite brand new. It's a whole new experience coming to Adobe. Um, well, I'll have to come again. Yeah, you yeah. you need to see all the new decorations are really quite amazing at Adobe now. Um, uh, Jeff and others and Kevin, um, uh, John, I'm uh, I'm honored to be here. Um, it's um, my coming on my 39th year at Adobe. Heaven help us. I'm I'm in, I'm employee number one as of today because I was originally employee 38. But 37 of those prior to my arrival have retired or left Adobe. I'm the longest standing um, employee as of today. It's an honor to be employee number one. I will pass this on. I have no idea when I'm going to retire. But um, I have been told, oh, John Warnock's last words were to me, Russell Brown, never retire. So there we go. I will. Um, I will see where that goes. Um, so we're here today to take a look at my work. I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and let's see. Share. Let's see. It's coming up. Let's go over here. Let's go over here. Let's go over here. Option L. Um, Command L. Ladies and gentlemen, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, you can. Okay, good. Um, so, um, of course, now this is in automatic mode. It's going to start going through these images. Oh, what the heck? It's going to go through these images. Um, <clears throat> my life as a photographer, I think, starts with the pandemic. <laughs> Um, and it starts with the iPhone. I, um, I, I was a graphic designer, trained as a graphic designer, went to Art Center College of Design in Pasadena. I joined Adobe as their first art director. I was doing annual reports and packaging and graphics for Adobe. I hired photographers to take photographs. I observed them but I never really had an interest in doing photography or setting up lights until the iPhone came along. I'm now iPhone crazy. Um, it has allowed me the simplicity to take photographs quickly. And I've most recently started taking photographs with strobes and an iPhone. The wackiest thing you 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 wonder why I have a a thousand dollar phone and ten thousand dollars worth of lights. <laughs> so, so there's no call. There's I haven't figured out the logic to why I use a phone other than the fact that it's a challenge to take photographs with a phone. It's not it's not as easy as using a DSLR or mirrorless camera. There, there's challenges to it. And I guess I love a challenge. I love the simplicity of the iPhone and I started taking pictures. And then along comes a pandemic where we're all, you know, set and we have, we've, we can't go traveling. We can't meet up with groups. I, I have to um, come up with a project to keep myself busy and I find that, and I can't fly anywhere, so I'm driving everywhere. I find that I'm starting to take more and more pictures of myself. And it started off early um, using my costumes and my crazy outfits to take pictures of myself. Um, and I'm a costume maniac. And anytime I can come up with a new costume or a new character, I, I, I do that. And it all ties into my conferences. And, um, and the pandemic is here. And I'm, I, my first, one of my first projects I was thinking was, you know, my portrait with masks on. 
and this is probably one of the first where I'm learning how to use a strobe and I'm thinking of my my events where I had Greg Gorman um, at one of my events and he's taking photographs and I'm I'm re-envisioning how Greg places his lights and I have a, a bad habit of copying Greg, as you were going to see in this presentation. But I was thinking about masking and how I could protect myself during the pandemic, and I would turn these into portraits. And I'm setting myself up with a strobe and my iPhone, taking these shots, um, changing out backgrounds. Of course, I'm still using Photoshop. Um, uh, Jeff, uh, I'm only gonna, I'll only speak slightly of the fact that I take my portraits and I do alter my portraits. I have to tell the world that I alter my portraits because I have trolls who follow me on Instagram and Facebook and they bring it to the world's attention that I did not tell the full truth. Uh, here I am here today to tell you that I do not have this much hair. I, I do not have this much hair, but I generate this hair. And one of my passions most recently is AI generated hair. And I just cannot get enough of generated hair. It's, it's just stunning what can be done with with generated hair and with someone who is lacking hair i'm really quite astounded um uh to add things into my imagery so here we are we're going through the pandemic i'm covering up you know how can i protect myself against this virus um and um so you can see through these different ways in which uh, I'm protecting myself. It seemed like the logical thing to do at the time. You can learn so much from just setting up a little studio and taking photographs um, like this. And I, um, Jeff, I'm looking at my time. You'll tell me when to stop, won't you, Jeff? I think this was my, one of my favorites, um, this one. Uh, <laughs> I think I got the the most um, uh, comments about this particular outfit. Um, it is truly getting ready to be protected as you left the house. You can remember we're right in the middle of that terrible pandemic, and I can't. You can't even go see anybody, and um, going to the store was a, a challenge. It's it's painful to think back to all of that, but this was my ultimate protection of not going to the grocery store. Um, I was going out, uh, as I said, I, I love to mimic. I, I was looking at surfers on the beach. I wanted to become a surfer. And I want to become a rock star. I'm getting old. Just getting old is, I don't like this getting old stuff. Um, but uh, going through all the, look, Jeff, look, look, <laughs> look. This is the outfit. I, I should be there with you in Hawaii right now with this outfit. Um, um Gosh, this is in my, I wanted to be an Argentinian for a while. It was Doc Brown meets um, Doc Brown and um, Shakespeare uh, come together. Um, it was a, a bizarre moment. I, I found this, um, this doll and um, yeah, I'm the wacko. I had an outfit made to copy this Doc Brown outfit. Um, and um, everybody has to have one of those. Um, wigs, 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 and more wigs. I wish I had a room full of wigs. Um, we're moving toward the, the Greg Gorman LA Iworks. I, I was almost there. This was a start. I think this is a little bit more this might have been a little bit of influence from uh, Joel Grimes mixed into this one, but um, uh, it will, as we see, it's going to get closer and closer to um, uh, to Greg Gorman. I found this wig online. 
And my brain just exploded because I was thinking of Ready Whip <laughs> when I saw this. And I just thought the two had to meet each other. I posted this on the Ready Whip site and I was really think they were going to love this. There wasn't this. They were absolutely quiet. No comment whatsoever. I, I did not get any bonus points from Ready Whip. No case of Ready Whip showed up at my home after this shot. Um, Shaving cream works better anyway. What's that? What's that? Shaving cream works better for that. It doesn't go rancid and smell after an hour on your head. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You have experience here, John? Well, I know performers who do sculptures with that and as a part of their yeah. Vegas performance. We, need to talk. we, need to, we do need to talk, John, because I am coming to Seattle to put on an event at the Adobe office. Um, oh, cool. Photography event um, on June 27th. We'll Great. remind you later. Wigs, 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 foam wigs. Again, we're moving a little closer toward um, that Greg Gorman look. Uh, this is when I went insane and they um, tried to cage me up. <laughs> um, the cowboy, I, I, I fall into this cowboy mode, started growing a mustache because I really wanted to photograph a gentleman who had an amazing mustache, but he just wouldn't let me photograph him. So I decided I would grow my own mustache and photograph myself. Um... I love textured backgrounds. I shoot against a gray background and then I use a blend mode of overlay to drop in the backgrounds. I, uh, this is a project um, that I'll be doing, um, John, um, in uh, Seattle. Um, we'll be photographing at the Adobe office and then turning everybody's image into a tintype but we won't be using tintypes. We're going to photograph it and then image it onto a gelatin transfer material and then transfer it onto metal at the Seattle office. John, you'll want to see this. Um, Sounds crazy. good. Um, Thanks. Uh, here's a transformation. Let's start with a standard photograph. Start getting crazy. Um, illustrative. Take, you know, you know, what can I do? You know, I cover myself with sand, um, turn a lasso into spaghetti, change my outfits. This was shot with a single strobe with my iPhone. Um, and I don't know, can you see my, do you see my image up on the screen as well as my my screen, do you see me on the screen, um, yes. Kevin? Okay, so you can see when I hold. So this is, the, yes. this is the crazy thing that I'm traveling with right now. So this is my, I take an iPhone and this strobe, this pro photo strobe, and the iPhone sends a Bluetooth signal to the strobe and fires the strobe. And then it somehow magically synchronizes the strobe with the iPhone. And here I am in my in the house, simulating this daylight um, with the strobe, a single un, the strobe has no um, modifier on it. Russell, is that a Godox strobe? This, excuse me, this is a pro photo strobe. Pro photo strobe. And it's called an A2. And um, it's not super powerful, but it's super small. And um, uh, if you want to see all of the equipment that I use, I've got it posted on the web at russellbrown.com forward slash portraits. There's someone behind you, Jeff. Oh, hi, <laughs> hi. Um, um, there's some, um, uh, did I say that? Russellbrown.com forward slash portraits. And you can find all of my equipment that I use. But I love this day, this studio look with a single light against a white background. And then you texturize the wall with an overlay um, for this simple sort of look that some um, a daylight, a sunlight shadow faked in the studio. Um, I have a habit I like to analyze other people's photographs by looking at the reflections in the eyes um, to see where 
good photographers have placed their um, strobes and how many strobes they're working with. This is, uh, again, that single um, pro photo strobe overhead and one protophoto strobe behind me to light up the background. I, I, I'm, I'm into the simplicity. I, I just like um, to keep it as simple as possible. Sim, uh, single strobe. I saw somebody doing this one, the single strobe with a, um, a screen on the front, a, um, a soft uh, fabric on the front of the strobe and then for this super close-up look. Um, notice I wasn't able to crouch at 68 years old. I have to have a seat there to support me at the um, Sepulveda um, Dam in LA. <laughs> what a wonderful place for photography. A long exposure stuff with the iPhone. Of course, this would be a fake buffalo over here. I don't know why, why I had to add a buffalo. I'm not sure. Long exposure with the iPhone is really quite amazing. Now it's getting uh, better and better on the iPhone. Um, cowboy. I just gone cowboy wacko crazy. Cowboys, cowboys, cowboys. And then I went to Canada and decided to become um, uh, um, a lumberjack. Uh, lum lumberjack. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're okay. Yeah. Um, then, um, uh, the thing about, I've discovered lately in Lightroom, this new ability to, I couldn't drop the background out as well as I can in Lightroom now with the focus adjustment. Um, help me, John, the name of this new feature in Lightroom is, is it it's called? Lens, 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 lens blur. Lens blur. Lens blur. And Lens blur identifies the subject in the foreground and then lets you drop the background. This is in um, a small town outside Vegas. This is Henderson, not Henderson. Um, oh, uh, this is Nelson, Nevada, where they have all of the old cars and junk lying around. A beautiful place for photography in Henderson. But this new feature of dropping uh, the background out and doing a lens blur, especially with the iPhone is really quite amazing. Here I've used lens blur again. I have a single light overhead, um, that, that classic, you know, bring that softbox. You guys, I know, I the only thing I know about photography and strobe photography is from observing other photographers and I'm going to, gee, why do why does Greg Gorman have his light so close to a subject? And he just puts his camera right underneath the the strobe with a soft box. And then I go try it myself and I go, oh, oh, isn't that nice? That light is really nice. The way that soft box lights up the subject and then the light drops off behind the subject. Um, you can see the little bit of reflection in my eyes there. Um, and, and so I'm out here in Nelson and putting the strobe really quite close. Uh, we're getting closer. We're, we're almost up to the current day here. Um, and, um, uh, this was shot two weeks ago and I'm in Nelson and I wanted to experiment whether I could do this with a single strobe. I strobe, um, one strobe is quite close to my face, and then I uh, and the can the phone is sitting on a tripod, and so I can go back into the shot and I strobed the airplane, and then I sandwiched and blended all of the exposures together, so that I had exposures of the plane as well as exposures of myself. Essentially, I did light painting of the scene and then blended them all back together uh, as a layered composite into Photoshop. Um, wacky things, I, I love this, um, this day for night look um, that I was working with. There's another example of that, that strong light and then textured backgrounds. Um, 
Jeff, I'm going to keep on going. Those are, that was my self portrait um, um, extravaganza. I find that I get the best response on Facebook. And as Julianne Koss says to me, Russ, are you doing this for Facebook, Russ? Or are you doing this for your for yourself? <laughs> Do it for I'm yourself. This. No, I'm doing this for Facebook. <laughs> I'm doing this for likes. I I gosh, I love the addiction disorder I have. I love the likes. And I think um I I feed off of those and they they caress you, they they comfort you. You feel good about yourself or the number of likes. I think it's helped send you down the right direction. Um, and so uh, that drives Julianne crazy that I, I would be, a, be, be manipulated by the number of likes that I can get. So we're shifting gears. Um, and Jeff, it's now 1138. I'm just going to shift gears. I had some time. Not only do I love taking pictures of myself, I love taking pictures of performers and gosh i searched the world for really amazing performers and get out my iphone and you know how the heck the only way to capture a fire breather is with and an iphone is with the um the mode uh, the um quick exposure mode the uh blah, blah, blah. I've, i'm going to john again to tell me the quick exposure mode on an iphone is that called... i don't know <laughs> it's rapid fire you hold the trigger with the iphone it does rapid fire and you can do a rapid fire you can never capture a moment with the iphone because there's a delay right. but if you do hold the button down on your iphone then it does the uh, rapid photography and you can get some beautiful moments of fire breathers um in just the right moment um performers models um makeup um oh uh a, a duo here i was trying uh, very early portraits i think i know what i'm doing i'm totally faking it at this time this was a wacky wacky this is like years ago and i wanted reflections i would never do this today i would never build a water pool. <laughs> I built a a twelve foot by twelve foot space in a studio and filled it with an inch of water just so I could have a, a reflection. This is ridiculous today. Yeah, there's, 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 there's an app for that, isn't there? <laughs> there's an app for this. It, yeah, it's it, called Photoshop. It, yeah, it's <laughs> it was ridiculous to build this <laughs> this the, the cost and expense and the trouble to build a water was out okay maybe the reflections are absolutely stunning but um gosh i would never do this today it's i'd use a generative fill i would use um, an app for this to get that to happen i'm traveling to mexico to take pictures of day of the dead performers um I love costumes and setup. Uh, you you love your job too, don't you? <laughs> yeah, there's a problem with this. Adobe lets me do this, but it is a it is a. I think, I, I think you can't you can't not everyone can do this. I have a, I, I can't be a total bum and do this i think i have a goal jeff i think i am promoting adobe i'm it's i don't like the word evangelize anymore i am a influencer um and i think i excite people about photography photography in general photography with a phone um get out there and take photos which brings me to a point i wanted to make Yes, I use AI, but I will never stop going on location. Um, can you see this? <laughs> um, uh, there's nothing quite like going on location. 
Um, <laughs> and I don't think you can simulate these things, but um, you can't experience. I think life is experiencing crazy things that you can go do in life and not sitting on your butt and typing into your computer the name of an interesting background. And so I I think um, AI is a very interesting technology, but I'm always going to rather visit the location rather than sitting on my butt. And um, I hope that's what this all, I, I hope maybe I'm too old for this thing. Maybe I'm the guy who's going to keep on using their vinyl records. Um, <laughs> um, but I think there's a mixture of, of going to Death Valley versus typing the word Death Valley. I just want to slap you in the face. If you, you're, you have a decision to go to Death Valley or type the words Death Valley. Well, I'm going to slap you silly <laughs> until you fall on the floor. That if you don't go to Death Valley, you're ridiculous. Um, performers. Um, I started doing, um, uh, capturing this woman here in Las Vegas, doing this typewrite walk and then doing another shot of her in the foreground and then combining these together um, these were shot during the pandemic. I'm moving. I drove to Las Vegas eight times. <laughs> um, but it, it's a seven and a half hour drive. But the beauty is you can throw all of your lights and such into your car and drive to Las Vegas and set up these shots and find performers um, and I I love overpaying my performers. I think they work really hard at what they do. And um, if I ever catch somebody not paying their performer enough, I, that's another time to slap them silly. Um, dry lake beds in the Las Vegas area. Um, this is Death Valley and it's currently flooded here. I really want to know if these formations are going to return to Death Valley. There's there's nothing quite like bad water at Death Valley um, for photography and getting out. Here I am in the, you know, you can see how I'm setting this up, the, the crazy rigs I, I do to to get my camera a little bit higher here in Death Valley. Um uh, in Death Valley, but yes, yes, Russ um, goes to the dark side with um, a little uh, uh, enhancement to his images. Performers. Greg, did you give me, uh, Greg, uh, Jeff, did you give me a, a time limit? Did you? I'm calling no, you. but, um, you know, uh, 45 minutes or so, you know, so we are, I don't know now, what We're now at 11.45. Yeah, so... A few more minutes, and then we can. And open then let's up go open the discussion. Yeah, um, uh, but I love seeing the work, so the, I don't the think anybody's is... fallen asleep yet. Yeah, no, I have. Have you fallen asleep? Oh, you got to see this one. Okay, I'm okay. recording. So, Russell, you could pick up back where you left off, or um, or we could. Oh, uh, if you'd like me to, or or do you want to? start a discussion or um so let's have a little discussion first let people see if they have some questions yeah um i do um yeah. where do you go or what do you do to find your costumes and props and stuff like that um it goes way back uh as a small child i i had a <laughs> A passion for props and um, such things. I would even I learned how to sew, and I would make my own costumes and outfits um, for a while. Um, I found a gentleman who 
used to work for Cirque du Soleil and I've hired him to make outfits for me. Um, uh, French Canadian, um, that was um, an opportunity. I often will find these models in Vegas is a really wonderful playground and resource. Oh my goodness. The number of characters in Vegas is mind blowing. I could spend an, a year in Vegas and document um, these people. And they're all, you know, the, being a performer, what a life. You're living from gig to gig. Now, wait a minute. Sounds like being a photographer from gig to gig. Um, they are, they, they're looking they want to be seen. They want to have their photograph taken and they like money. And so um, you just start searching for them that way. So many of the models come with their own outfits as well. So that's how I make them, buy them, find them, um, these different uh, outfits. Um, and the makeup artists I've worked with, I love tracking down a makeup artist. The next thing on my list I want to hire a makeup artist to do a, a series of, take a series of models and change the makeup on their face and do some portraits with that Cirque du Soleil style gradient makeup on faces. Yeah. Did that answer that the combination of things? Yeah, pretty much. Thank you. Sorry, guys, I dropped out for a second. Um, <laughs> The whole house had a power failure and everything just popped back on, but it took a while to get recycled. <laughs> so are you recording again, Kevin? Yeah, I'm recording again, Jeff, and hopefully the recording I did, did is, is there somewhere, but we'll find out when we're, we end. So it's a good thing we recorded on two machines. Sorry about that. Never seen anything quite like it. It's weird. I'm surprised. My power usually goes out here, so that's... Uh, um, uh, in our last episode... Um, we yeah, while were, we're, while we're using questions and talking about my costumes and makeup, I'm going to share a couple of pictures here. Uh oh, uh oh, <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. This is black yes. back in 2014 at Art yeah, Director's this, Invitational. Yeah, John, let's talk about this. <laughs> this is a very interesting phase in my life. I didn't have a sense for, um misappropriation <laughs> i was going through life and i was turning myself into different cultural <clears throat> characters and <laughs> and those times i I'm, i would find it very difficult today to to go into a, this kabuki or japanese yeah, so and so I, I've got a lot of flack <laughs> turning myself into um, different characters. How about this one? No, I didn't get better. my... I was okay <laughs> there. I was okay. Wait, Native American. Native American. Whoa, no, this, whoa. Is, this is Monster Palooza. Uh, yeah, Russell it, took me on a few great adventures. Yeah. Um, I had somebody put makeup on. The interesting one on this was, you know, Russell contacted me in, I think it was January of 2017, said we're going to Monster Palooza. And on the Thursday night, he said, tomorrow, I think I'm going to get made up. Yeah. It's like he made up his mind that day. Back in January, I knew he was going to get made up. I mean, it was... <laughs> <laughs> I'd seen of course he's going to get made up. Made up. Um, and talking about his rock and roll. Yes. I have different themes over the year. Yes, you came across this one and uh, I, this was when I wanted to have a nice mustache so I just glued one on I, I none of this glue on mustaches anymore um I, I'm moving on uh, to much better that was in our Roman. last EG conference I miss these that's a Roman yes I miss EG um uh, and who oh, is that guy there I don't I recognize that that's little, the alter ego. That's Clark Kent. <laughs> Every, too, everything else is Superman, but this too, is Clark no, Kent. Too normal. Move on, move on. <laughs> That's it. That's all I've got. <laughs> um, oh, I, yeah, I could, I, I have lots and lots of performers. 
which is leading me to this year is uh, Adobe Max is coming up and um, in Miami in Miami. Yeah. I choose a different theme each year, and so this and year I'm I'm thinking I uh, I might attend Russell. You will discuss that with me, won't you? Okay, yeah. because I think it would be great fun to go down to Miami and uh, see what what uh, Adobe has in store for. They always like to release interesting new stuff around Adobe Max. Yeah, and they rely upon you to influence people. <laughs> by I the mean, use of their products. Maybe we'll have to come down and do a live photo PXL chat down there. That would be great I, fun. My theme will be um, the circus. And mm -hmm. uh, Le, I'm calling it Le Cirque Galactique. And it is a circus from outer space. Oh. <laughs> And so I'm going to bring all of my um, background with performers and makeup and such, and I'll I'll select about three performers and bring them to the event, and I'll put on my own Cirque-like event, and the performers will perform um, at the show, and then the students in my class, I have a pre-conference class where we'll be making circus posters. Um, so I think um, Kevin um, and Jeff, I think there's um, a, quite a bit of potential for visual insanity. Yeah. Yes, um, we, we'd love to do that. That may be fun and um, could, could be a lot it. of fun to the, the video and record back, back um, behind the so, scenes. Yeah. Russell, I was going to ask you, uh, the, the image of you on stage with Sir uh in san francisco you were actually at the show shooting and yes did, did you actually get on stage i really wanted to go on stage so badly oh. i want to i want to i want them to do it their... would have been a fulfillment of your lifelong dream to yeah. be a circus performer oh, they they oh yeah um they gave me um a front row seats and then they um they cordoned off the seats behind me so that and they don't normally let somebody come in with a, <laughs> a camera and take shots. This is the one I don't want to this to get around, but this was the one po time when I said the iPhone wasn't going to do it for me. I wanted some I wanted to capture low lighting, high quality shots from the first row um, at, at a Cirque. And so they. Um, uh, so I went in with a, a Canon, um, what was it, something, Canon with a four in the name. Jeff, what would that be, a Canon? 5D Mark IV. 5D Mark IV. 5D Mark IV, okay. And so I had a, a, a very nice Canon camera and shot from the stage and with a nice telephoto, a zoom telephoto lens and captured there at the show. Um, that was really quite exciting. I'm I'm sort of linking up with Cirque du Soleil and goofing around with them a bit. Uh, if you look at my Instagram site, I shot a video for them to promote them and um, different spots in the city with my iPhone. Did you see that crazy rig that I had set up? Yes, there? the spinning around wig. Yeah. What I I don't know whether that. I'm sure it added to the the project, but um, well, the the tossing of the crown to all the different participants that was uh, that was actually quite fun. That's what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So make sure you go to uh, and and the recording, uh, um, Kevin. We should put a link to all the sites that uh, 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 Russell has mentioned. Yeah, we, um, we'll and, do that when uh, at the bottom of the YouTube and the record and the article that goes with this recording. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's difficult to get into um, break through the doors at a Cirque because they're a corporation. These are copyrighted characters and figures, and you can't just waltz in with a high a, a high quality camera and start taking pictures of their of their characters. So I was very privileged 
that they allowed me to to do this. Now I can't go off and use them. I can promote them and put them on Instagram and such. I wouldn't be able to do anything beyond that. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have been able to use them at Adobe Max. I they own the rights to those photographs that I've taken. So I'm learning from that experience of working with Cirque. And then I hope to bring that. Check, check with Greg also, because Greg uh, had a, a, Greg Gorman had a, a strong relationship with several of the performers that I think are now retired. The twins in yeah. particular. I, I photographed. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Link. And yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think Cirque du Soleil is just a, a wonderful uh, troupe out of Montreal, I believe. <laughs> And I had a friend that actually went to uh, circus school up there. He wanted, he took clown lessons to be a clown. And it's a very serious profession, yeah. although very. you're supposed to be very funny. But, but it's, yeah, they do, um, the, the clowns I was photographing, um, and I helped to do some more photography of them. Quite, yeah, there's the, now, I'm, I'm talking about myself or am I talking about clowns? Mm -hmm. Am I a clown? Yes. There's their stage persona and then there's this offline. When they're not on stage, they are a completely different character. Yeah. And the moment they step on stage, they turn into this clown, this two sides of them. Um, and that's kind of like you too, Russell. Yeah, I have that. You remember the first time we met? <clears throat> the first time I saw you present was at a Macworld, and you came out on stage oh. dressed as a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to hide. Dressed as a wizard. Yes, dressed as a wizard. To talk about the magic of Photoshop, yes. and George Jardine, bless yes. his heart, had a Mole Richard uh, smoke machine that he didn't know how to use. Yes. And you, you pump, 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 and then let it come out. Yes. And it wasn't coming out, so he kept pumping and pumping, and this yes. 2000 see uh oh the stage was enveloped in smoke i wish there was a video of that somewhere but no this is the one of the most um uh it was one of those moments that i would love to forget uh-huh but it is it is you it is me yeah. there was a point in my history where you're going along it's it's early days of photoshop you can get 2,000 people in a room at Macworld. You're one of 10 people in the world who does a Photoshop talk. And everybody was just, you know, just this, you know, you know half the people in the room were going to become Photoshop evangelists. <laughs> but they had to see what not to do. And there I am. I'm thinking there was a point at which I was no longer a Photoshop instructor. I was... I am now a, a a a clown. I'm a professional clown, a performer, a performer, and yeah. <laughs> I forgot about the balance between performance and education. I should have been there to educate this group, but then I decided to put on this show and to bring in the smoke machine and cause. Oh, oh my goodness! It was the it was the point at which I realized I needed to pull back. <laughs> I, needed yeah, I brought to... smoke machines into things and set off the fire alarms. So, Oh yeah. Um, yeah. It was a crazy point in my career <laughs> where you realize that, Hey, wait a minute. Uh, you are, you are here to, to promote Photoshop, not to put on a circus. <laughs> oh my oh my oh my but Russell we have a question popped in from Jill yeah. do you print your yeah. own photos yes I do I love printing and I've fallen in love with the Canon GP2000 boy you hit me on and um, the 2000 has fluorescent inks now, what that, but you drop those into the mix with your other inks and you can just get these supercharged colors. <clears throat> um, Julianne Cost sits next door to me and she says, Russ, could you please stop 
oversaturating your images. They're making my eyes bleed. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a passion for oversaturated colors. So you have that option. Um, I have a 24 inch um, Canon GP um, 2000, which I love. And I, again, during the pandemic, it, it, the Adobe office is empty and I have my printer and I'm making um, these 24 inch prints and putting up an exhibit. I was thinking I, I need a gallery. And so I created the Adobe hallway there now. I've turned it into my own personal gallery wall um, of images that I've printed out. I'm working with, um, boy, you got me going on a roll here, John. <laughs> I'm working with Hannah Mueller paper. Um, mm -hmm. My goodness. Paper that, um, ha uh, paper that is so sexy that it's just <laughs> wonderful. You remember which one? I kind of like their fine art etching. Oh, that's a gorgeous one. Um, I'm into uh, the... Um, Wait for it, wait for it. Uh, um, there's an artist. It's named after this particular um, artist um, um, along that line of the etching line. I'll remember the name of the artist that they named it after. Um, beautiful stock of paper. Comes in rolls or sheets, and I can put the roll into the 24 inch roll or the sheets into this printer and um, print out these images and then I was framing them and putting them on, on the walls what? there. So the this is, I yes, was just saying, this is a little bit different, Russell, because a year or so ago, I asked you about whether or not you were up your uh, social media type images to actually make prints. And you said, no, not so much. So this uh, is a newfound oh, uh, a endeavor. Newfound, um, I am... Um, uh, I'm. You can see some of those images on my wall behind me here. These, mm -hmm. um, these come off the wall. No, those are stuck on the wall, um, <laughs> uh, and they stuck there because in case the earthquakes. I'm waiting for the big earthquake here in <laughs> California. We we are so due. It is so 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 overdue that we're gonna. I just feel we're gonna have a really terrible one. Um, but James was asking if it was the William Turner paper. It's the William Turner paper. Who wins the prize? Bud James. <laughs> oh, wow. The William Turner paper. He's, Good Lord. Good Lord. Um, if you can see everyone showing, he's got it there. Oh, there he is. Okay. There. Uh, and uh, well, let me like, this is Bud J James. Yeah. If he unmutes, he, uh, the camera will switch to him. Yeah. Um, isn't that a nice, beautiful texture to it that grabs. Hey, guys. Yeah. To the, it grabs the inks really nicely, and I'm I'm not a gloss person, um, Bud. You're not a gloss person, I'm assuming. Uh, I do, but well, since I have the P nine thousand, the Epson, and you don't have to lose a lot of ink switching between black and photo black. Uh, I I jumped onto all these papers I've had for years, and I'm actually using it now because I don't feel guilty about wasting ink. You know? <laughs> it's seriously, it's a financial consideration. Yeah, it, it does get that way. Hey, Jeff, you look better in Hawaii than you did out in Arizona there, buddy. Hi, Bob. <laughs> How you doing? Um, yeah, great stuff. It's really good paper. Hannah Mueller is expensive, but boy, it's beautiful. That's cool. I, I just put together, speaking of printers, the uh, Epson 50, P5370 printer, the new printer yesterday, and uh, ran my first set of, of prints on tape. it. Lots oh, of yeah. Tape. Wait to, I have a time lapse of, of taking off the blue tape. And as Dano would always say, there's always another piece hiding in there. They'll get you. <laughs> but I think I got them all this time. So, yeah, don't, uh, tell, don't tell Dano that I'm using the Canon. Um, Dano's working with me on um, some of my projects. Um, and um, Dano is John, Dano supplying the printers for my events in Seattle. So I must thank him. That's good. Good old well, Dano. Hey, Russell, a question I've always been meaning to ask you, you've been on the iPhone for so long yeah. and, and doing some amazing things with it. And you've had the chance to use probably any camera you wanted. Why the iPhone? Why? Um, um, 
I think it's some um, uh, simplicity. Um, the tools are built in. And you know what the real the real beauty of it is? I didn't quite catch on to all of this until Lightroom Mobile came around. And it's the ability to just take the shot. It goes directly into Lightroom Mobile, into the cloud, and boom, it's on my phone, it's on my iPad, it's on my desktop. Now, you could probably say that the same is true of a DSLR. You you take your photographs and you transfer them in. But I've got it here on the phone. I can immediately start to edit on the phone. I can use special applications on the phone. I can add a reflection, a water reflection <laughs> yeah. on the phone. <laughs> Um, the phone, I think we're going to see, uh, this is not a product announcement. I think we're going to see more and more mobile utilities from Adobe, um, making it easier to do the things that you do on the desktop. I don't use a laptop anymore. I use a, an iPad. Yep. I'm one of the, I'm one, I'm one half of 1% of our users. I represent, you know, a small group of our users, but you know, I shoot on the iPhone and immediately go to the iPad and, and start to use Lightroom and Photoshop on the iPad. And Are so, you shooting Pro Raw? Yeah. Now, there's that's a good question. Yeah, I do shoot Pro Raw, and I don't recommend it for everybody. I'm shooting Pro Raw and, and in the 48 megapixels when I can. Um. 6,000 by five, uh, 6, 8,000 by 6,000. I can't remember the, the, the proportions for 48 megapixels. Um, I like shooting at that larger format. It takes up an enormous amount of space on my phone, but I have a terabyte of space on my phone. Yep. I don't represent the, the average user can't afford this, this phone. And can the average user afford the five terabytes of Adobe storage I have? Um, so I, I have the luxury of having the ability to, to capture in the highest resolution of my phone. And it gives me the ability to make my 13 by 19 inch prints that I make. And you said something earlier, I don't res up, um, Jeff. The only resing I do is with um, the magic that Eric Chan has created inside yes. of Lightroom. The super res. The enhance function. The, uh, use, uh, super res, I, isn't it? Uh, super res, yeah. I, I, see, I use the super res, but I don't use any third-party apps. I'm finding that the results, especially on the William Turner paper, isn't so... It doesn't. It, it's not so serious about your resolution. If I went to a a, a paper that was um, a glossy paper, I might start seeing some of those um, issues. But I think the William Turner hides some of the issues related to low resolution. Um, well, one of the other things that uh, I've always done a trick uh, is uh, use. Uh, I I sometimes will use the enhanced noise reduction function that uh, Eric put in, uh, oh, which I mean, to I accidentally photographed a friend, Carl Corey. I wasn't paying attention, but I photographed him and uh, 1 750th at F11 with a little LED light. And I didn't realize when I was shooting it, it was ASA ISO uh, 25,000. And you know, it was like boulders, and I used the noise reduction, and it was remarkable. Uh, now, I don't suggest always shooting at ISO 25,000, but it's there if you need it, and it's remarkable. Let's take a moment to to thank Eric for that. Benefit. And Thomas. And Thomas. And Thomas. Oh, yes. my. Oh, my. When it comes to an iPhone and noise... I know how to make noise. Um, and that is a miracle. That is a miracle for iPhone photography is um, Eric and Thomas's um, noise reduction. And in, which you could do in camera raw as well. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely stunning stuff. So, and then the other trick is once you do the noise reduction, 
and and do the sharpening is to go into the uh, ability to add grain and to, to very subtly add grain to make it look more photographic because sometimes the that. noise reduction can make it look a little synthetic and then if you add the grain back in smaller grain very small like uh -huh. 10 amount like maybe 20 and then run the roughness up to 75 it looks uh, very much like film i might have to try that i have not looked at that well um, steal it if you want yeah um <laughs> Um, that, now, that's Bob's a... asking a question if the Lightroom noise reduction only works with Lightroom camera, but no, it's available for anything now. Yes. It's... Yeah. Well, the, the noise reduction function is somewhat, uh, it's got to be a Bayer uh, sensor. So uh, mm -hmm. that's one uh, limitation. Does it... So it doesn't work with a Fovian, but, but Canon, Nikon, Sony, they're all Bayer, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Um, Jeff, doesn't it? Look to see whether it's a DNG. Is is that what you're? I don't think no. the, D, the DNG doesn't work, or I think it might now. There was a Lightroom which just got updated again. Right, Bud saying um, it doesn't work with TIFF. I think it has to be a raw file at least. Yeah, it has to be raw. Yeah. Yep. Um, I was just trying to remember which one of them was because it generates a new DNG from the raw. Yeah. Yeah. They're looking. They're looking for the the raw. Uh, <clears> as a, I, I will it. tell you, Russell, that the, the, with the iPhone 15, which actually I'm using here on Zoom, <laughs> which is why it somehow the, it follows me. It's like I'm being stalked by my own camera. Um, <laughs> but the thing about it is 45 megapixel, and then I'm shooting with a Nikon Z8, which is 45 megapixel. And the ease of shooting the iPhone, I was shooting Sunset last night. And I was trying to you know, put it on tripod. Uh, screw it. I just shot sunset with the iPhone uh, at RAW, and it's absolutely gorgeous uh, because yeah. there's there they've got elves in there in the camera. <laughs> yeah. They're doing yeah. special They're, uh, um, multi compute computational assembly of multiple captures, and it's it's all magical that that the the uh, Nikon and Canon. Sony, I think, is starting to catch up on some of the computational stuff, but uh, it's really remarkable. I actually have one of those elves here. I don't know if you can see it here. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, this yeah, is a Nomachello that Kevin. someone made for me, but I realize it looks almost more like Jeff than it looks like me. Getting back to <laughs> Jeff's question, it's the beauty of that computational mathematics is one of the key elements and the magic in the phone that makes you know co corrects things a camera shake um multiple photographs being taken um sharpening i love the beauty of that magic and apple does a great way of hiding it from the user and i i feel as if i'm doing taking better photographs but in fact they're helping me along the way and i would guess that Apple will just make that more and more um, uh, better over time. Now, you know, we're Kevin talking and about I know one of the elves that happened to be working there, Klaus Mulgard. Um, and uh, every time Kevin connects with Klaus, Kevin tries to ask what he Klaus is working on, and he's wow, well, I can't hear. Mm -hmm. So he, the Apple is top secret. Tell no one no, KGB like no. secrecy, um, but. We're, we're Go ahead. Jeff. We're talking about iPhone, 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 iPhone. That, but I also use um, the Samsung, um, mm -hmm. and the Samsung S twenty four, S twenty three. It's an amazing camera. And if you you would say to yourself, "Well, Russ, if you had to have one phone, I use two phones because the Samsung gives you a true." Uh, you can adjust the shutter speed and the aperture and the um, ISO. You can have an exposure that is 30 seconds <clears throat> long, a real exposure with real light trails, and it behaves like a, a standard camera. And so there are occasions when I, 
I just have to switch. I, I, there's only one way to photograph a particular scene because Apple just won't let you go there. They, a one second exposure um, won't make it sometimes. And so that's why I have uh, two different cameras um, um, for working. There with. are some third party apps that allow uh, a little bit more manual control of they, the iPhone. They, they simulate, they, they do, they simulate some of that. It still has its one second um, uh, exposure time. I think they may be doing some video processing or they'll capture multiple images and then blend them together. Um, but with light painting is in particular is what I love about the Samsung, um, its ability to do that. So I, mm -hmm. everybody says, am, am I being paid by Apple? You know, to certainly not. Um, the, I just expand our minds that there are phones beyond the iPhone that are really quite good. And I've never used uh, Samsung as a phone. <laughs> I've only used it as a camera. Um, but I do travel. I travel with both of those. And I, I also travel with two phones because I'm on the deck of a ship in Antarctica. And it's the first day out of uh, port. And I drop the iPhone on the deck of the ship and the metal ship on the top. And it, because of the, the case on my phone, it bounces off the corner of the case and goes right over the railing and into the Antarctic Ocean. <laughs> and you didn't jump in? Oh, God. No, no, I did not jump in. And it is gone. So just like I'm sure everybody travels with multiple cameras, but thank goodness I had my backup cam phone with me. Um, I think it also gave me the opportunity to, that was the iPhone was gone, gone, <laughs> gone. And um, I gave me the opportunity to open up my Samsung and really get to know it more in that situation. Cool. Uh, how interesting. Let, be, before we go much further, I just want to interrupt. We've gone. Uh... Oh, we've gone too long. We've, uh oh, we lost him. Kevin? Kevin. Kevin. You lost power again. <laughs> he's not gone, but he's frozen. Well, he's frozen <laughs> in the second window. Holger, where are you in Germany? Um, the next bigger city is Dusseldorf. I'm in the west, close to the Dutch border. The Dutch border. I, I'll be doing an event in Hamburg in July, in uh, July, in April. April. April be passing through the area. Uh, oh, I just got a message. Complete power of failure again. <laughs> uh oh. Um, well, let me uh, assume I, I can't remember. We're at about an hour and 23 minutes. Yeah. Um, and I I think we need to circle the plane for a landing. Yes, we yeah, do. Is there any uh, last minute questions anyone wants to pop in before we... Or any questions that Russell has yeah, of Bob our, us or the participants. Go ahead, Bob. I just, I just tried the uh, shooting a raw file with the iPhone. I'm using the iPhone 13. It may be oh. different with the 15, but noise reduction in Lightroom still does not work with an iPhone picture, even if it was shot in raw. It does work if you use the Lightroom camera, however. Ah, okay. I, I am getting it. Well, work. you need to make sure that when you shoot the Pro Raw that it's saving um uh it's not converting to h e i c uh pro raw i think is only on the 15 isn't it no i uh, i know it was on the well i think i did it on the 13th but um i'll check yeah i'll check i'll check I, i'm ch i'm I'll, ch I'll check as well i'm i'm using it i don't know how <laughs> and I, I often will um use things and not and so we were talking about, were we discussing not not lens blur? Um, noise reduction. Noise reduction. Noise, noise reduction. Um, default grain effects. I'll, I'll have to look um, whether I was doing this on my iPad or my iPhone. I'm not, I can't remember. I'll look here later. Yes, yeah, so you're going to do in conclusion, um, Jeff. Well, is there anything you wanted to ask any of us, or is there anything you wanted to? Oh, um, I, I'd be very curious. Um, 
Uh, I think you probably all pull out your iPhone um, occasionally while you're doing your photography um, to, and you ha have a particular, you like its look. Sometimes the iPhone is going to give you these saturated look. It gives you, as Thomas Knoll said to me, he, I love this quote, says, you know, Russ, your iPhone is just hallucinating and you're looking at the hallucinations created by the programmers at Apple. And I and I go I said, yes, you're right. But I like the hallucinations that Apple programmers are giving me. So there are that that look, that type of film that you might receive. Um that that film quality is quite interesting sometimes. But of um, course, Nikon, Canon, Sony, they all have engineers and they all kind of make their decision on what they want things to look like. Yes. So the look the default look of all the cameras have, um, and Canon in particular, tried to make it look like film to ease the adoption of film photographers into digital. Yeah. Uh, but the interesting thing is that uh, uh, Camera Raw, when Thomas did Camera Raw, he made the decision to normalize raw files instead of optimize. Lightroom, I mean, um, uh, the... the uh, well, phase one and capture one and a lot of apps try to optimize the image, which is fine, but Thomas took the route of normalizing. So it had the unfortunate effect of making Nikon, Canon and Sony raw files kind of all look the same, a little bit lower contrast and a little bit less saturated than what the camera manufacturers themselves would have chosen. I, I'm but, sure. um, uh... Um, Jeff, just in closing, I'd be curious to know what level this group alters their images, um, like a one to 10 ratio of um, would you use levels and curves on your image is number one. Um, and number 10 is, would you add something, would you generate something or place something that you did not photograph into one of your images. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I personally, Russell, have a rule mm -hmm. that I will do multi-image combination. I've been doing that for 20 years. Well, actually, my first job was in 1984, where a lady put two images together into one uh, digital output. Yeah. Uh, but all the pixels, I want to have all the pixels be mine. Uh, so. Okay. I fall short of filling uh, until a generative fill or Firefly um, allows me to upload my images to use as source images. Um, I'd use generative fill only to remove things. Uh, and I think that that's a legitimate but removal. Those, no, those aren't your pixels inside <laughs> that removed area. Jeff, uh, sometimes they are not, and sometimes they, they, they are aren't. interpretations of the area around your source. Yes, yeah, yeah. So in some way, they are based upon your yeah. image. Just, yeah. just you're, you're, yeah, yeah. For myself, I used to jokingly say to people that if I can't finish it in Lightroom, I failed as a photographer. If I needed to open Photoshop, stop I that. Go. No, that was when the past. Oh, because um, <laughs> then you. You released that um, the uh, backgrounds, the textures, the texture pack a few years ago. Yeah. And I, I love the textures there that you released with that. And so I do yeah. a lot of texture work in Photoshop. So I do bring a lot of my images into Photoshop, but um, try not to need heavy duty retouching. But I've used some generative films sim similar to um, Jeff for removing things from backgrounds yeah. or extending backgrounds and things like that. Because I work in a tiny basement studio now like a seven foot ceiling and a five foot wide background. And people think I'm in a giant studio with some of the stuff I do. So. Uh, and, and, and others in the group? Older? Um, no, I'm, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of old fashioned that way. It's, I believe that the, the, when I walk around that I, I see images that are there and I'm witnessing and recording, and I already have a problem if I see one little twig that's sticking sideways and like removing that I always takes me, that decision takes me forever. So I'm not really. You would never that. remove a telephone pole in a shop. Well, yeah. 
it, it would take me a while if if, if I, to make that decision. It's really not. Uh, so you you follow the Stephen Johnson rule. Stephen of Johnson. If, <laughs> yeah, if it's in front of his camera, he does not remove it, even if, uh, although he will remove things by uh, shifting, shooting left and right and and cropping to avoid. Uh, objects yeah. that he doesn't want. So that's a good. That's, that's a goofy rule. I, I have <laughs> removed telephone poles and wires. Uh, I have moved stuff around in the frame. I remember when shooting on a beach, the car was over here, but I wanted it over there, so I moved Unbelievable. it. Unbelievable. I'm, and I'm I'll gonna, drop a I'm moon in occasionally, now. but basically, I'm with Jeff. My pixels are pixels. my pixels. I'm not using anybody else's stuff in my images. Yeah. Remember, I grew up as a graphic designer, and graphic designers are evil, and they'll do anything <laughs> to um, make an image better or make more money. Well, um, I grew up in advertising, and we put a lot of stuff, you know, it's, everything in the frame is intentional, right? Yeah. But but uh, a, little, a little trick here or there, but for me, my stuff has to look like natural. It's got to look like reality. I'm not a, I'm not a surrealist. I don't do uh, dolly esque, uh, you know, dripping keyboards and stuff like some of my friends do. I just can't. Uh, so there's I think on that. this scale there's Stephen Johnson and there's Russell Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you? I would like if you could show me how to generate the hair, though. I would really appreciate that. <laughs> oh, that's, that's I think easy. I met both Stephen and Russell for the first time at the first Thunder Lizard Photoshop conference back around what was it ninety four or so. Yeah, that was my introduction to both of them. Um, it always struck me that looking at one of Stephen's prints, and I'm going, Stephen, isn't this some garbage on the ground? <laughs> 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 that was there. It, it yep. stays, stays there. Uh, so true. I do love this Stephen Johnson Russell Brown scale. I'll do anything. I'll I'll enhance my hair and I'll, <laughs> I'll go over the edge. I I am. I, I'm a complete maniac. I scare people sometimes, but I, I do have a rule that I really love to start with my own photograph. I'm not going to type in and create a photograph, but I am going to um, add things. If I need more hair, I'm going to add more hair. Um, I think that's a decision that an artist makes. And I also and it's think, cheaper than roll gain. Yeah, <laughs> I also think it's very important as this moves, technology moves forward, that you have to tell your users that you are using it. Mm -hmm. I don't think there has to, I, there's none of this. There are a lot of people online who are doing this, faking it completely, and they say nothing. They lie completely that it was generated. They, they tell us that it's an actual photograph, and I hope that doesn't continue. Well, Adobe is actually doing something with uh, the authentic, uh, authentic authentication, authentication, uh, we're working with uh, a number of companies so that there's a way of getting provenance of an image that if it's been manipulated, uh, uh, by AI, that it leaves a fingerprint. We'll see if that works. First, all you got to do is do a screenshot and, and then you bypass it. You go, oh, I should have said that back in the early days of, uh, people using the World Wide Web, I was represented by a picture agency. Uh, they, they put up a website and they put a little, uh, looked like a computer monitor icon in the lower corner of a frame when something had been digitally retouched or the color had been altered. They yeah. wanted you to know that. I don't think that's as important anymore. Oh, you don't? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, you know, I, like I said, I move stuff around. I, I use levels and curves, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll drop a moon in, but it's my moon. It's a picture of a moon that I shot. I'll drop a full moon in a picture, something like that. But I don't feel the need to tell everybody I've done it. Uh, uh, you know. I, have to, I have to tell everyone. I, it's, it's, you know, I get. Well, you uh, said you have trolls. I don't have any trolls. So. Oh, no. <laughs> trolls. Oh, trolls. Are okay, wonderful. guys. I'm back. Can you hear me okay <laughs> now again? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, another power failure. I guess we're having problems after the storms last night. Yeah, I had that so last I night. didn't know Indianapolis was third world. <laughs> well, we got clobbered pretty good last night from the, the these storms and tornadoes that came through. You know, Jeff, you yeah. missed it. You're you're in Hawaii, and last night, I mean, I don't know what it was like in the city, but out here on the prairie, it was pretty hairy. I mean, 
Oh. My power was out for like an hour and a half. Right. Where's well, mine right. didn't, uh, and I know because my uh, um, uh, my NAS would tell send me an email if it was offline, and and I was not offline. Hmm. So, so if the power Russell, was out, would we still be able to email you? Yeah, well, it goes through the Synology service. So okay. if it goes offline, I get an email from Synology. That, okay. And then when it comes back online, I get an email that it's back on. But Russell, I yeah. personally wanted to express my gratitude and appreciation for you coming today, uh, but also for your legacy and what you have done uh, for the industry, for Photoshop, for the community itself. Uh, you you are an influencer, but you're much more. You're you're you are a wizard. You are uh, magical in the stuff that you do. And the bottom line is that uh, you like to have fun, and you share your fun uh, freely, and you share your knowledge freely. Uh, and uh, so that you are a national treasure, Russell Preston Brown. Obi Wan sure. Adobe. Obi -Wan very, very well said, Jeff. Very well said. You get and in fact, recorded? on the page, there is a link to the Obi Wan analog uh, presentation on on Photoshop. Oh, good. That you everybody should watch that because mm. it's very instrumental and humorous. Yeah, uh, there's yeah. also a video of the uh, many faces of Russell Brown. Uh, that's uh, and then uh, yeah. So, Kevin, what do you want to do? Well, number one, I just wanted to say thank you to Russell. I think you've done a good job of that. Uh, we're going to be back in two weeks. Uh, we do have a speaker uh, lined up. I'll put an announcement on the site in the next day or so, so you all should get notified of that. John Hartman, uh, and we're going to be doing high-end light painting with John Hartman. Uh, he's a, uh, very well known for his light painting of commercial works and buildings and cars and a uh, great speaker. So we'll have a little bit of fun with John Hartman. And uh, then uh, we have two other speakers lined up. Uh, Steve Gosling will be joining us at the uh, end of March. And then we have Ian Plant uh, when, when we get into the next month. And uh, I'll make those announcements and we'll send out the invites on those. And there'll be ads on the, on the site. Uh, I hope you're enjoying any of this, uh, the, this whole idea, the photo chats that John started. Uh, we're always open to ideas and, and new speakers, and we got quite a list of speakers, probably have enough speakers if they all say yes to get us through the, uh, the year as we talk to each one of them and invite them to, to join us. Uh, so it's a lot of fun to do this. Um, I'm not sure my recordings will work. However, we do two recordings. Jeff does one. So one way or another, we'll get a recording up online in the next few days, and uh, you can uh, if you had to leave the meeting or want to tell your friends, they can join and take a look at that. It'll be on the YouTube page. So uh, once again, thanks to uh, and John and Holger and Jeff and specifically and more than anything else, our friend uh, Russell. Um, hopefully, maybe Russell will come back sometime. Uh, hopefully, I'll get out to see Russell and with Jeff or whoever and uh, do some live stuff with him. I think that would be great. But do follow him on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, he's always got work going up there. He's prolific. And it's just always fun to see the things that he did. And I know today when um, I have to go down to Roberts to pick up my new 100 uh, Fuji 106 camera. And uh, I'm going to look at those pro photo lights and the fact that you can trigger them from the iPhone in that app sounds like uh the missing link for me as far as some of the photography i'd like to do i'm doing more and more iphone photography we've been putting more and more articles up on the site uh regarding the iphone just because it's such a viable camera um so look for that i will be doing a whole story in the next month or so on um my apple uh world the way i live into the apple world and the eco structure for that apple world with the iphones ipads and uh, iPhoto and different things along that way. And we'll also make sure we do a talk about how to export out of photos the raw files so that you can take them in the Lightroom and use them. So there's a lot of stuff uh, to cover and just so many hours a day to cover. Um, once again, thanks to all of you folks that have stuck around through this. I'm sorry that I had major power failures in the middle of it, but you know, recover and get back as quick as we can. So it's been a great day. And Russell, big, big thanks again. Say hi to everybody at Adobe, Eric and 
uh, the whole the team, Thomas, and all the people that you work with, uh, Julianne. Um, it's always fun to work with you guys, and uh, you do great work, and appreciate the support of, of, of what you do. So once again, thank you. Thank you for, for I thought I would show you guys where we're staying. Yes. It's uh, the Weston. I highly recommend it. There's the Koi Pond. Okay, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> well, Jeff, enjoy the rest of your time there if you can. Uh, and you got a high enough um, bandwidth, uh, send me your recording. If not, do it when you get back and I'll get it edited and put up just in case. I, okay. I just don't know how I'll recover mine. Yeah, I and I have the second half recording too. You did? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, yeah. send send all Thank the recordings, we'll piece Let's it together and make something wrestling. out of it. Thank okay. you so much for inviting yeah. me. All right. Yeah. Everybody take care. Well, we'll see you next time. Hasta la, hasta la vista, baby. Have fun, Jeff. Don't get sunburned. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Hawaiian everything. Yeah, Aloha. Mahalo. <laughs> take care. Okay. Right. Bye. See ya.